Okay, yes, I'd like to introduce you all to NCAR's Engineering for Climate Extremes Partnership. So this is a partnership facilitated by NCAR to strengthen societal resilience to weather and climate extremes. So I'm, I'm in the uh, regional climate section of m -cubed. So let's see where we've come from. Well, we've, we're in an environment of increasing frequency of natural hazards. Here's the annual total. You see from the 1980s, we've almost doubled in, the, in recent years. And so along with that, we've got increasing damages. You see from 1980 to today, there's been a quadrupling of damages. This is global total damages. And that's because there's more people and more people have more stuff. So back to ESEP. So the mission of ESEP is to enable improved societal planning to weather and climate extremes. So we do that through partnering between government, uh, academia, commerce, and local communities. We do basic science, that's what we're here at NGAR to do, engineering and technology. But also we develop tools to support decision making. So instead of talking about rainfall and temperature, we talk about dollars and uh, flood height, for example. An, an overarching philosophy is that of graceful failure. More on that later. So traditionally, damage modeling starts with a hazard. So you define the hazard, it could be flood height. Then you define the exposure, so the buildings. Then you define vulnerability that says how the exposure responds to the hazard. So the output is damage. And the output is a typical damage curve. So it gives you a probability P of damage D within a set time period. And from that curve, you can estimate the 1% event or the 0.1% event, for example. So we're lifting the lid on that and developing a global risk resilience and impacts toolbox, or GRIT for short. So this is a fully open source modeling system. It's developed by the community. It's fully supported, so think WARF or CESM, and it's flexible to future demands. So GRIT starts with a database of exposure, hazard, and vulnerability. And the hazard is historical observed climate, but also future projected climate. So sitting on top of that database is a framework. So this framework, you think of it as a number cruncher. So it uh, computes all the different permutations of the input data and outputs uh, impact variables as defined by a series of applications or apps. So we have some of these apps in development. Uh, we're working on a hurricane app, a flood app, an urban climate adaptation app, and a construction app. So what do these look like? I'll give a couple of examples. The first off, the uh, Hurricane app. So a user can go in and input your location, your time period of interest, and it would spit out, say, a time series of likelihood of hurricane damage or a spatial map of uh, hurricane damage uh, potential. Another app is our Force Majeure app. So Force Majeure is a contractual clause in construction contracts. It's the act of God. Uh, that says the likely downtime due to weather or climate. So a user could again input their location and time period, and it would give you, say, a likelihood of threshold exceeding, say, hot days or wet days, and that enables uh, competitive contracts to be developed. So uh, our overarching uh, philosophy throughout all this is that of graceful failure. So what is this? Well, here's two examples of failure, but I think you'll agree they're pretty graceful. But, but what does that mean when we're talking about weather and climate extremes? So let's first talk about what it isn't, and it isn't the response to the uh, September 2013 front range flooding where a lot of the canyon roads were washed out. So building for resistance does not mean building resilience. I'll give another example of graceful failure. So here's two uh, containers that can hold liquid, but they're going to encounter a hazard. So which one do you think will maintain operability after it's been struck by the hammer? Well, I think you'll have guessed. The can can still contain liquid. However, on the other side, we see a catastrophic failure. So operations have ceased. It can no longer contain liquid. So moving on to a uh, real world example of graceful failure. Again, going back to the 2013 floods. So in Boulder, we have a series of the bikeways and uh, pedestrian paths that guided the floodwaters away from uh, the local houses, or the majority of the houses, avoiding a catastrophic failure. So that was a summary of ESEP. So if you're interested in getting involved, you can subscribe to our website, read about us in Atmos News, connect with us on Twitter, or uh, send us an email.
Thank you very much.